Wow, free green screen transition. Come on, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. Hey, what's up guys? Hope you had a great holidays and also a great start to the new year. But today, this video is off to do four things. Number one, thank you all for 100 subscribers. That's so cool. I never thought I'd ever hit 100 subscribers. Pretty sick, not gonna lie. This shirt has green in it and I hope it doesn't like interfere with the green screen. To a lot of people that number's not that big, but to me it means a lot. I just wanna say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed and who has all watched my videos and hit the like button, subscribe and share. That just means a lot to me. The second thing we're gonna do is talk about the best movies of the year. And then thirdly, we're gonna give out some awards. Yeah, yeah, I did a little award thing. And then fourthly, we're gonna end it with the worst movies of 2021, the movies that just really broke me. So. Let's waste no time, let's get straight into it. By the way, this green screen is 10 by 20 feet and came with all this setup stuff for crazy cheap on Amazon. I will link it down below if you need something like this. This is kick ass. It's 10 by 20 feet. It's, it's way too big, but again, but it's also 10 by 20 feet. All right, let's get into it. Disclaimer, I did not see every movie this year. And there's a lot of movies I think would be on my best list that I just didn't get a chance to see. I think if I saw Green Knight probably would have been on this list, uh, Tragedy of Macbeth, uh, Licorice Pizza. I was very looking forward to those movies, but I've gotten very busy and also I got sick. So we gotta do what we gotta do. So there's only seven movies on this little list. So again, sorry. And this also goes for the worst movies. There's only four on the worst movies. Not every movie that I saw this year, I could put in this list. For example, Black Widow. I saw it, but I wouldn't put it in best or worst of the list. So that gives you anything. To kick off my list at number seven, surprisingly, we have Free Guy. In a normal year, Free Guy probably would not be on my list, but it's also 2021. My expectations for this movie were in the dirt and they released 30,000 trailers and I watched too many of them. I thought every joke was ruined for me, but honestly, there's a lot of funny jokes in this movie that were not in the trailers. Very surprisingly though, they showed way too much of this movie. Despite that, me and my roommate had nothing else better to do, so we went and saw this movie and honestly, it just wasn't that bad. If you want a dumb movie just to turn your brain off and watch, honestly, this is probably the movie for you. It's really stupid, I don't know where it is on streaming, but again, it's not that bad, it's kind of funny. Even though Ryan Reynolds plays the same character as he does in every movie, he has a lot of charm in this movie and it actually has some decent jokes that I did not see coming whatsoever. I am no rating for this movie, it's at number 7. At number 6 we have Shang-Chi. I reviewed Shang-Chi so I'm not going to talk that much about it, but Shang-Chi was pretty good. If you watch my review you know I have a problem with the ending of the movie, it just throws too much at you, but other than that, Shang-Chi is a pretty cute and fun movie. I think Shang-Chi is definitely a bit more different of a Marvel movie and I really like that about it. It's got great kung fu in the first half of it. I like the conflict mostly when it comes with the Mandarin. I like Shang-Chi and Aquafina's chemistry in this movie. I don't remember her name. And I like the family dynamic in this movie, so Shang-Chi makes the list. Kicking off our top five, we have the Snyder Cut. I feel so guilty for having no faith in Zack Snyder. And boy was I wrong. I actually really like this movie, quite a bit actually. And I'm honestly really sad that we're probably not gonna finish off the Snyderverse, especially with the rumors of the Flash movie, but at least we have his vision of Justice League, and that's what's really important. And Justice League, you know, these are not my favorite versions of Superman and Batman. I love the actors that play them, I just think the writing's not that good. You know, I they really sell this movie for me. And it's so nice to see his vision of Justice League on the big screen and actually have it pretty good too. Yes, it is way too long and there's some stuff that you can clearly cut from this movie, but pretty solid. I really like this movie and it deserves to be in my top five list of 2021. Kudos to you, buddy. At number four, we also have another DC movie, The Suicide Squad. James Gunn will always kill it. I always have my faith in James Gunn. This movie's really funny. This movie's a fun time. I already did a review about it. If you haven't seen it, go see it. I think it's on HBO Max and now oh. I've already talked about this movie. It got a 9 out of 10 for a reason. It's a nice, fun, solid ride. I love the cast. The cast have a great dynamic. The movie looks good. It's paced pretty decently. It's a little slow in certain parts, but it's paced pretty well. And I just think this movie is a really funny and good action ride. Definitely go see it. Alright, the next three movies I did not do a review on, and I'm not going to go in that depth because I'll make in-depth videos later when I find the time. But at number three we have Last Night in Soho. I love Edgar Wright so much. Edgar Wright can literally do whatever he wants, any genre, any type of movie, and he'll always deliver. Edgar Wright is one of my favorite trilogies ever, and now he is one of my new favorite mystery... He has introduced me to the genre of Jello. Jello is a type of mystery horror genre, specifically with like Italian movies, and I like this genre a lot. It's really cool. I like this mystery, almost noir, horror movie kind of vibe, and it's really cool. I think this movie has pretty decent pacing, a really fun mystery, uh, and a really cool concept, and I think he delivers it pretty well. I'm surprised to hear there's a lot of people who hated this movie. I'm not like saying like a lot of people, but like 
if, like sometimes I'll be on TikTok and I see a lot of slander for this movie, and that's fine. People can have their opinions. I just thought it'd be more universally loved, like I did. Anywho, really like the movie. So what could possibly be in my number two? Well, it is Dune. I loved Dune. All year I thought Dune was going to be my number one movie, and it was. Dune, like number one and number two are so crisscross for me. I can't help it. Dune was so good. I love Dune. I love Denise. He has such a good vision. I actually had the review typed up for it already, and I just didn't get to record my review for it just because I got really busy with like final stuff. I had like some mini finals early November. It was really stupid. But I absolutely adored this movie. This movie has such a really cool aesthetic. I've never read the book, but this movie made me start into the audiobook. It is so freaking cool. Frank Herbert has some great writing, and I believe that Denise has perfectly translated that on screen from what the little I have read so far. Denise, I always have faith in you please keep it up I am so excited for part two all right folks here we are number one you saw this coming spider-man no way home was so good like I said spider-man and dune are like tied for my top two but I had to pick it and yes yeah, spider-man is my number one this was everything we wanted this, this movie was everything we wanted and more. Around September of 2020, there's a lot of leaks going on about this movie, so I did not watch any of the trailers. I mean, I watched the first trailer, but I didn't watch like any of the trailers. I stayed off social media for this movie, did everything I can to avoid everything, just so I could have a pure experience. And it was so fun and so good. It went away I didn't expect. I thought we weren't gonna get to the multiversal stuff until the hour mark. We got it like towards like maybe first 50. 15 20 ish minutes so i was like sick it just took me away as i just didn't expect it to go we got some great reveals and some great characters in this movie in the saga i'm not gonna spoil this movie if you haven't seen it though what are you doing how and if it hasn't been spoiled for you how definitely go watch if you're a spider-man fan you already have now and definitely watch if you're just a movie fan in general it is so good i love this movie i've seen it twice i'm gonna see it a third time real soon maybe a fourth time but i'm definitely gonna take a break because it's just I'm getting a lot of Spider-Man media right now. I definitely just need a tiny bit break so I can just process it all. Anywho, those are my top seven movies of 2021, but now I'm gonna go into some awards that I just made up. Alrighty, after the awards, we'll get into the worst movies of the year because that's just the funner part of the video. All right, kicking off the first award, we have best looking movie, and I'm gonna have to give it to Lamb. Lamb, you know, it was good, I guess. You know, I, that, that ending really kind of disappointed me, but I think the movie, that movie's your artsy-fartsy slow burn movie, and it was really good. It looks beautiful, by the way, so that's why it gets best looking movie. Not my best list, and it's also not my worst list either. All right, the second award goes to worst character. Uh, this is not a movie, but it's a TV show, uh, but this character goes to Darcy and WandaVision. I hate this character. This character sucks so bad. She's not funny. She's very annoying. The actress is fine. It's not your problem. It's the writing. Do better. Please do better. The third award is Best Personal Short Film. I did one short film this year, so it's Aftermath. There we go. Our fifth award is Best Beard, and it goes to Oscar Isaac and Doom. Man, that beard is so good in that movie. Keep it up. This next award goes to Best Actor of the Year, and the best actor goes to Nathan Meyer. He was in my short film Aftermath. It's my, it's my cousin. So yeah, you did great, bud. He played four different roles. Or five. I don't even remember. That dude's a chameleon. Our sixth award is Best Personal Effect. Now, over the summer, I did a lot of visual effect practice. Just like a lot of test footage, a lot of test shots. I might put them on screen so they don't look amazing, but it's just like testing. I only did one version of each. I'm about to give this award to my pistol gunshots. I think this one probably just took the most time because I love hip film, uh, but their gunshot effect is very customizable, but it does it is a little time consuming another reason why I give this effect is because my fake gun actually doesn't have doesn't slide so I had to fake that slide and post I also have a uh, VFX bullets so yeah I'm just gonna have to give give myself a pat on the back there why not and then finally this is the best award that anyone could possibly earn from me this award is best hair this award is taken from the weekly planet because they have a best hair award but hair is very important to me of any kind of any character of any person on earth even if you're bald that's okay i don't hate you but i had to include this award so our contenders we have adam driver in house of gucci we have timothy chalamet in dune we have the swordsman in hawkeye yeah you got pretty good hair and we also have oscar isaac in dune and the award goes to me no 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 i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i'll give it to timothy chalamet you win again anywho those are the awards that i have made up mostly Hope you all enjoyed it. I think I'm going to do that every year and probably just add more and more and more and just make the video just longer than it needs to be. Anywho, now let's get into the worst movies of 2021. All right, baby, this is probably the best part of the video because I'm really going to dog on these 
favorites movies. Like I said, I did not see every movie of the year, but I do have four on this list. I wish this wish was longer, but I'm also kind of glad I didn't see more movies this year. Kicking off our list at number four, we have Mortal Kombat. Now, I did see Mortal Kombat twice, by the way, and the action in this movie is pretty fun. And that's it. This movie, this movie's not that terrible. That's why it's not number one on my list. It's not that bad. I just didn't see a lot of movies this year, and I did put it on. It's fine. It's Mortal Kombat. It shouldn't be amazing, but it should be better than this, I believe. I kind of hope... Honestly, I wouldn't mind what they do with this universe if they just had better writing and more to do with it, but it's fine. I watched that movie twice. At number three is a movie I completely forgot I saw this year, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. The first one is not that bad. The first one's kind of dumb and fun. This one is the first one, but it has way less charm. The first one is not a masterpiece either, but it's kind of like a dumb movie to turn my brain off. And I actually remember it. This movie, I do not remember a damn thing that happens except for one joke. I'm not even kidding. This movie's whatever. It's forgettable. It's the same duo, just written not as well. Ryan Reynolds plays the exact same character. He always does, and Sam Jackson plays his classic character. And they have fine chemistry in the first movie, and this one is just... It's a bit overdone. I'm over it. I really hope there's not a third one. Fun concept. Salma Hayek was kind of funny, but really, I'm never gonna watch this movie ever again. Especially since I don't remember a damn thing about it. Alright baby, we're getting to the real sh** of the year. At number two, we have Venom Let There Be Carnage. I hate Venom in general. And it's, I don't hate Venom because of these movies, but I do believe they are a big reason why I do not like Venom. You know, as a kid, I thought Venom was so cool, but growing up, I wouldn't even put Venom in my top 10 Spider-Man villains. I just don't like him. I don't care for him. He's gone way off the rails in the comics and clearly in the movies. I don't think the movies are funny. I don't think they're good at all. I think the writing's terrible. And there's not much to like in these movies, especially the second one. The second one, thank God it was only an hour and 30 minutes, by the way. It's very short. And thank you, by the way. But God, this movie, there is, there is one scene that I kind of enjoyed in this movie. It's not a spoiler, but the scene is when Eddie and Venom are fighting in the, the apartment. I think that was a really fun scene, like arguing and stuff. And by the way, great for Tom Hardy for acting alone. That's great, good on you, man. That's fantastic, not everyone can do that. Anything else in this movie can go straight to the bit. Woody Harrelson is such a good actor, but I wouldn't believe it in this movie. Uh, Shriek is in this movie, and that was fine, I guess. They set up another villain as well, I believe? I believe? I don't remember too much at the end of this movie. The Venom vs. Carnage fight was fine, I guess. Like, I didn't care whatsoever. I didn't care at all, actually. This movie is not funny. This movie did not keep my interest. I laughed at, at this movie in the theater. Like, I remember me and my dad would kind of chuckle at this movie, but not because of the jokes. I did not laugh at one joke in this movie. Venom's powers are insane, by the way, in this movie. Like, actually just crazy. Cool post credit scene, though. I did not want to see Venom with Tom Holland whatsoever. Like, his Spider-Man fight. I don't want to see that whatsoever. But I will admit, it was interesting and it was kind of cool. I was like, oh, that was sick. But, you know, I hated this movie. I also did write a review of this movie. Uh, just never, never record it. Got busy, clearly. All right, folks, that one's over. Now my number one hated movie. I knew this movie was gonna suck, by the way. I saw this movie for fun because I knew it was gonna be bad. One thing about me is I love bad movies. This movie was so funny. It was so bad. There's not one thing I liked in this movie except all the bad stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, this one goes to Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> Dear Evan Hansen was absolutely hilariously bad. I will admit the music is not that bad. As someone who loves music, the music is not that bad. There was one song towards the beginning. It was so good. It was bopping so fast. It's about what De it's about what Dear Evan, his name's not Dear. It's about what Evan does with the the kid who killed himself. It's about like what they do uh, as he lies to the parents, and it was such a good song. Other than that, this movie is god awful. Also, Dear Evan Han his name's not Dear Evan Hansen. Evan is the worst person I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't know why this movie expects you to be on his side. Honestly, I think I'm gonna re-edit this movie to make it more of a horror movie. If you've seen the movie, did you like it? Because you shouldn't have. I want to re-edit this movie into a funnier, like, psycho psychological thriller almost, because you can clearly do that with this movie. There's a lot of stuff you can do. And honestly, if I have free time, 
I think I might do it in the summer. I mean, I got if I have the time, I think I'm going to do it. If you've seen this movie and you liked it, maybe it's probably because you saw the theater production and you just have nostalgia. If you haven't seen the theater production and you like this movie, why? I know opinions are subjective, but I just don't understand why anyone could like this movie because he's just the he, he's a piece of shit. He's the worst person ever. There's nothing to like about this in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched my Breaking Bad, my Better Call Saul, my Bojack Horseman. Yeah, they're all terrible people, but this guy is the worst. He's worse than Walter White. He's worse than Jimmy McGill. He's worse than Bojack Horseman. That's not true. But he's very unlikable. I hate this guy. There's nothing to look forward to when you're watching this movie. This movie has horrible pacing. It feels like it's five hours long because it's a musical. Musicals do do that. All right, well, let's be honest with ourselves. They do. But God, the only way I can enjoy this movie is ironically. I, at my campus, they do free screenings. And I saw this and I was like, Yo, I think I might go see this movie because it's really bad. And they're like, oh yeah, let's all go. Me, Megan, Zoe, and Manny sit there in the very back row because we don't want to disturb anyone who wants to see this movie. Most people who want to see this movie sit pretty close. Very back row. Oh my lord, we were just going off on this movie. We were cracking up. This movie is so funny. I honestly wouldn't mind watching it again. And no, it's really not the worst movie of the year. I enjoy the movies I just listed way less than this. This movie's so enjoyable because it is so so bad. I'm positive next year the number one's gonna be a movie I did not enjoy whatsoever. This, I had a lot of enjoyment in it because it is so hilariously bad. I can't wait to get plastered and watch it again, honestly. It's gonna be so good. Anywho, guys, we did it. We finished the year. It was a long year. It was a pretty one, too, not gonna lie. It's pretty good movies came out, but a lot of movies did, too. I was going to, but I didn't watch Space Jam. Uh, I didn't watch Halloween Kills. I didn't watch House of Gucci. Uh, I didn't watch Green Knight. didn't watch Tragedy Macbeth. didn't watch Liquor's Pizza. A lot of movies I did want to see. I didn't want to watch Space Jam or Halloween Kills, because I heard they sucked. I mean, Space Jam 2 and Halloween Kills, I I heard it sucked. So I was like, oh, I'll just save money then. You know, I'll go watch Lamb instead and not even be on either list. There's a lot of movies I saw this year that would probably be on either list. I just got busy. I got tired. I got sick, too. A couple times, weirdly. It's been a long year. I'm ready for a fresh restart. This semester, hopefully, I'll whip out a short film, you know? I had a live action one planned in October, but I mean, I didn't have time for movie reviews. So, cheers to you guys for being really kick ass and subscribing, hitting the like button, share, and watching my videos and being very supportive, being good friends. Love you guys. Cheers to me. I didn't do anything. Cheers to me for not doing anything. Also, cheers to the year for me getting my channel back up, for coming back out of its grave since 2019. So, yeah, there's good things that happened this year. A lot of bad stuff, not gonna lie. But, you know. Some good stuff happened this year. I hope last year treated you guys pretty well, and I hope this year treats you even better. Especially if you had a crap year last year, because you don't deserve that. You don't. If no one's told you, but I'm very proud of you, keep it going. We're all going to keep it going here. It's just me in this room, but we're all going to keep it going in here. Happy holidays, guys. Happy New Year. Cheers to 2022 and all the good and really shit movies it's going to bring this year, and all the good and bad stuff that's going to happen, because... It's going to be a good mix of the both, I can just tell you that. Let's not get beat down too much. Let's stay positive. Let's keep the good vibes going. And thank you all for hitting the like button, subscribe, and share. I know you all did that. Thank you very much for that. Anywho, guys, sorry for the past few months being a show with this channel. I'll catch you guys for the next video, whether it be Matrix 2 and 3 or movies I'm excited for this year. Whether it be, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.